So you've got rough terrain, you need a rough terrain crane. This model by Conrad comes in a Grove branded box. And it's nice that there's some information about the real crane printed on it. If we pull off the sleeve and lift the lid, we find that the model's been delivered in an Australian configuration, so let's turn it round and get it the right way up. There are a few parts to assemble on the model, and it's good that there's an instruction sheet. And that describes most of what you need to know, except it doesn't mention the tool that's provided. And there are no reaving diagrams for the two hooks. As is quite usual for Conrad models, we have to separate out some of the plastic parts, and then we can start the assembly. A nice touch is that the outrigger pads can be clipped for transport, and we'd best fit a door mirror for the cab so the driver can see behind him when he's driving. That one fits in place easily enough, and there's another one that goes in actually onto the roof of the cab. This one is designed to allow the operator to see what's happening with the winch drums. And to make that possible, there are a couple of mirrors at the back, one for each winch drum. We're not done with mirrors yet because there is one more to fit to assist with driving along. And then we can move along to fixing the fly jib, and the first thing we need to attach is a bracket to hold it. That part fits nicely, and then we can land on the fly jib, and it rests on the bracket and hooks over at the end. So this system actually avoids having a separate pin to pin the jib on. And it works well enough because the jib will stay on when you're actually using the crane. Another nice touch for this model is the folding handrails which clip on at the back. And they are designed in such a way that they can be raised or folded. Moving to the front of the crane there's a small piece to attach for the single line hook block. And that just presses in. There are two hooks supplied with the model. So to run some rope to fix those on, we just need to pull it off the two winch drums at the back. And such is the magic of cranes, etc. Look how quickly they've been reaved. After a quick tidying up of the tying off point, to go for the authentic traveling look, we need to add a couple of chains, but these are not supplied with the model. However, they are well worth adding on. Another nice aspect of the model is that the counterweight block is separate and can rest on the carrier. Or to attach it onto the crane, you need to clip it into place. With that done, you can reach behind and pat yourself on the back because the assembly is complete. Starting underneath, there is some detailing of the chassis with the transmission modelled in plastic. And although the wheels are plastic, the tyres have a nice chunky tread pattern. The outrigger beams are tough plastic, but the colour match is excellent. The outrigger pistons are smooth, and there's some nice grill details on the carrier. The cab has got a detailed interior, including a fire extinguisher, and there are some very nice small graphics on this model. The crane body has got some hydraulics detailing to the winches. The boom detailing looks realistic with lights and spooling drums, and there are metal sheaves in the boom head. Although the plastic pins for attaching the fly jib don't look quite so good. The fly jib is a nice piece with good looking lattice work. Out on the Cranes Etc test track, this Grove model moves along quite nicely without being free rolling. There is steering on both axles, and the range of movement is very good, so you can impress everyone by swinging your boom around sharply. And if you like crab steering, you can have that too. Okay, the GRT 8100 has been delivered on the job site, so let's set it up for work. And we'll begin by folding up the handrails out of transport configuration. To begin the setup, we need to disconnect the hooks, so we'll raise the boom and lower the hooks. And if you want to do this in a realistic way, it takes a little bit of time to set the crane up properly. Once the boom's up enough, we can disconnect the chains that were tying on the hooks. And then we can move on to extending the outrigger beams. These pull out smoothly enough and once you've got them extended we need to disconnect the pads and place them roughly where the outrigger pistons are going to go. To lower the pistons they just unscrew, although they are thin and shiny so a little bit difficult to grip, and then the ends just clip into the pads. The good news is the beams are strong enough to hold the crane wheels free. 
Another nice small feature on the model is the access ladders which can be lowered at each end. The main boom ram has a very nice locking system and you use a special metal key to loosen it off or tighten it up. This is a very good system and you just need to make sure you tighten it up enough if you're running a big long boom. As you would expect you can rotate the crane and this model does it nice and smoothly. The boom extends in a normal way and you just pull out the sections and each one has a locking clip at full extension. The winches work by using fingers on drums so be prepared to wear through to the bone. And if you prefer to be laid back you can always tilt the cab. Let's now rig the crane with the fly jib and we'll try and do it the way the real crane does it. So with the boom lowered we insert pins on one side of the fly jib. That then means we can swing the fly jib around and we have to pull it right round in a half circle in order to attach the pins on the other side of the boom head. Once that's in place we can go to the maximum and open up the swing away section and it's secured in place with another pin. All we need to do now is to make sure we've got enough rope run out and then we can run it over the end of the fly jib. After that the boom can be raised and we're in business to go lifting. There is another feature on the fly jib which is that you can adjust the angle and it's controlled by a hydraulic cylinder which is stiff enough to hold any pose that you want to set. One thing you notice handling the model is that it's really quite heavy. So let's get out the specially commissioned cranes etc of Weybridge and if we carefully load the crane on we can see how much it weighs. It comes in at just over one and a quarter kilograms or nearly three pounds. Continuing the measurement theme, the main boom fully extended measures about 39 inches or 98 centimeters, and with the maximum fly jib, we get about 51 inches or 130 centimeters. This is a very solid and robust Grove Crane model from Conrad and it's got a very nice combination of features to make it interesting. The detail level is also relatively high with some of the small graphics being a high point. Overall it's a really nice flexible model and it's good enough to be rated as excellent. Music